Hey everyone, Shane here with eTrailer.com. Today I have a 2020 Mantis Travel Trailer. I'm going to walk through how to install the LaSalle Bristol RV Camper Tank Heaters. What would be the purpose of using tank heaters? Well, the main purpose is to keep your tanks warm enough so that the water doesn't freeze so that you can empty them or uh, add water in when you need to. For instance, if you're camping in cold weather conditions, what happens if you don't have the tank heaters if it's open on the bottom and your camper is not set up for uh, cold weather conditions or it doesn't have a winter package on it, your tanks are open to the weather. So you get a lot of wind that may blow under there. If it's freezing, those tanks are going to freeze because they're made out of plastic. Adding these on keeps the water from freezing inside that tank. So if you need to empty your black water tank or you need to add water into your fresh water tank, you're able to do that. This is what our pads look like when it's installed. It's going to be constructed out of uh, a foam material. It's going to be about three millimeters thick, and it sticks right to the bottom of your tank. It's going to work with tanks from 29, uh, 29 gallons up to 40 gallons. It's going to be 18 and a quarter inches long by 12 inches wide. So it it uh, works well for your, some of your even some of your bigger tanks. Now we have one installed on our black water tank as well as our fresh water tank. The wires, as far as wiring it. We have a power wire and a ground wire, so they're pretty simple to install. Now the pads can be wired directly to the battery. They're going to have an internal thermostat that when the temperature drops below 45 degrees, the pad will kick on. Once it reaches 67 degrees, it's going to kick back off. We actually wire two of them together into a switch, which can also be done. Um, if you're going to wire it to a switch, you want to make sure your switch can handle the amperage of both pads. A couple things to keep in mind. If you're going to hook it up how we did here uh, with the switch, you're going to need spade connectors, you're going to need butt connectors, a fuse holder, and also the switch. Each of those can be found here at eTrailer. If you're just hooking directly from one pad up to the battery, you're just going to need a fuse holder that is able to handle the amperage. Now these pads are going to draw about 4.8 amps. So again, as I mentioned, make sure your switch can handle the two pads if you have them connected together and also your fuse holder. Now the pads don't necessarily have to be installed on your tanks or if you install them on your tanks you can get extras and a lot of people are installing them on their steps so in the colder months if you're out camping your steps aren't frozen when you try to walk outside you fall down and hurt yourself. Keep in mind that the pads are 12 inches wide the typical step is only going to be 8 inches wide so you're going to have some extra. With the wires running into it I'm going to recommend not trimming them down the one sticky side of it though allows you to kind of form that uh, to the bottom of the step so you can kind of clean up the install look. To start our installation you need to locate the spout coming out of your tank. We need to take some rubbing alcohol, make sure you're not using any type of uh, other solvents, and we're going to wipe down the tank where we're going to be placing our heating pad. Now our customer already has one, this is our black water tank, our customer already has one on their fresh water tank and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding a second one to this tank and then tying the both of them to a switch on the wall inside that we'll be installing in a little bit. So we'll rub this down with some alcohol, clean off any dirt or anything like that. Let this dry for a second. So our heater pad is going to have some brown paper on it. We're going to peel that off. And we're going to take our pad and we're going to stick it close to where our drain is. Let's start here. Just gonna, we're going to press it into place. From here what I need to do is you have your power wire and you have your ground. But I need to go over to my other heater that's on my other tank. I'm going to go ahead and pull those wires loose so I can determine where they're routing and get everything tied together. So on your tank heater you're going to have a power and ground wire. Our customer uh, the one they already installed had their power and ground running directly up to the battery which is straight above their fresh water tank. So what I did is I disconnected it, cut the fuse holder off, cut the ringtone off, and what they were using was jacketed wire. 
Uh, you can find this by the foot here at E-Trailer. Uh, it's bonded, or it's jacketed. It's got a nice coating on it, so it'll protect it under here, and it's going to have two wires in it, black and white. <clears throat> Since we're installing a switch, what we need to do, or what I did, was my red wire coming from one panel, my red wire coming from the other panel. So I took the jacketed wire that they had connected, and I cut it to length. I attached my red wire from one panel, red wire from the other, together on one end. I use a heat shrink butt connector. My jacketed wire, my black wire, goes into it. That's going to be my power source for my pads. From here, what I did is I took my jacketed wire with my black and white, got connected in here. I ran it through the wire loom clamps that are already here over to where the front door is and where I'm going to be installing the switch. The white wire coming off of each panel, all I did was connected them together and grounded it, grounded them right here to the body ground or the frame ground. There's already two factory grounds here. So, you know, your camber might not be set up like this. As long as you have a clean spot on your frame, you can ground your wires there. My black wire that I have running over to where I'm going to be running my switch. On my switch, there's going to be three connections we need to make. One's going to be a ground, that's for the light. One is going to be our load wire, which is going to be this black one that's going to our two uh, panels. The extra white wire, which was initially the ground wire for our first panel, is actually going to be in my extension for my power coming from my switch. This is not long enough to get up here to my battery. So what I'm gonna do is I have it ran up inside by the door where I'm gonna be putting the switch. The extra that I'm gonna cut off, I'm gonna extend this up and we'll connect it and fuse it right to the battery. My front door is right here. There's a cabinet that sits right here where I'm gonna be mounting the switch. I jacked it wire, I ran it right up into a factory hole uh, where there are some other things that are mounted. So I already have a hole there. Now we can go up, we can cut our hole for our switch, get our two wires uh, connected to the back, or three wires connected to the back of the switch, and then hook up to our battery. This is the side of my cabinet right inside the front door. This is my jacketed wire that I pulled up. I'm going to be putting my switch right here. Um, we're going to be using this switch here. For now, we're going to end up putting a, a larger panel in here that has a couple other switches on it, but for now we're going to put this one. So what I want to do is I need to center this in a location where when we cut out the hole for the other panel, it will cover that hole or we'll be able to cut out of that. I'm centering it right with this. So how I did this was, you don't necessarily have to, this is just how I like to do it. Since I want it centered with this, you can see I have painter's tape, lined it up top and bottom, and I took a piece of cardboard. I took my switch and cut it to fit around that piece of cardboard. And I'm going to use that cardboard as my template so I can cut out this hole. Now because this, this cabinet is pretty nice, brand new camper, uh, we don't want to chip this as much as we can. So I'm going to start with a pilot hole in the center. I'll gradually go up to a bigger one and then I'm going to take a saw and I'm going to cut that square out. I'm going to make sure before you do anything, you check back behind it to make sure there's nothing back there that you're going to damage. Once I drill my hole in the center, I went ahead and outlined this mark here. And we'll go ahead and peel this off. I'm going to take a saw and we'll cut out that square. Once you have your hole cut, go ahead and test fit your switch. I would not suggest putting, pushing it all the way in. It's easier to run your wire through and wire the back of the switch and then push it in. And just test fit it. Do any trimming you need to do to uh, make sure it's gonna go in. The switch that we're using is by JR Products. It's just an on and off lit switch. Uh, the nice thing about it being lit with our tanks is we know when that's lit up that our tanks are, I mean our heating pads are on. So, 
jack of the wire, I'll go ahead and run that through the hole like that. And then of course, as I mentioned, it has a black and white wire in it. The black wire is the wire that's going to my two pads that are connected. That's gonna be um, the load and then power, which we're gonna use the extra white wire that we're gonna cut off here, extend the white wire that we have on the other end up to our battery and then fuse it. And then from this one, uh, we'll just take a little bit of extra wire and there's a panel right here, the ground panel, right on the back side of this cabinet or on the inside of it. We're just gonna run this directly over to that grounding uh, spot there. We'll cut that off, I need to hold on to that guy. Go ahead and split this. Now I have a piece of single ground or single white wire. Uh, this is gonna be my ground wire coming from my switch. Your spade connectors do not come with your kit. So you'll have to pick some of those up. Go ahead, ground wire. And you just follow the instructions on the box. I'll go ahead and feed this through here. And then I can trim it down. Then we'll strip back our two wires that are together in the jacket. Load wire, which is going to our two panels, or our two heaters. We'll add on a spade connector on each one of those wires. Load is going to be the bottom. Power is going to be the middle one. There. Now I'll go inside, hook up my ground wire to my panel. And then we'll take our extra jacketed wire. We'll pull the white wire out of it and extend it up to our battery at our fuse holder. This is the ground panel I was talking about underneath the cabinet. I just ran my ground to an empty slot here uh, from my switch. So now from here, we can go over and extend our power wire that's going up to our battery. We're gonna take our extra length of wire that we cut off from where we uh, were hooking up our switch. Strip back one end, add it on the heat shrink buck connector. Our white wire that's coming from our switch is gonna be powered. We're gonna strip back this end. We're gonna take the extra length of wire that we had the buck connector on. We're gonna add it onto that wire. I'm gonna take the other end. I'm gonna feed it right up through this factory hole. My batteries actually sit right here. So I'm gonna feed this up here. Like that. We'll get connected to our battery. Make sure everything's working. I'll come back, use a heat source. We'll shrink these down and we'll clean up all of our wiring. A couple things to keep in mind. If you're running two tank heaters together to one switch, one, you gotta make sure that the switch amperage can handle the amperage coming out of the two panels. Two, your fuse holder. Fuse holder has to be able to handle the amperage as well. Each panel is 4.8 amps. This fuse holder, it's an ATC, ATO uh, fuse holder. It'll hold 20 to 25 amps. I'm gonna be using this one and installing a 25 amp uh, fuse in it. The way we put it in, it's gonna come like this. It is, does not come with the fuse. We're gonna cut it in half. One end we're adding a buck connector, adding it to the white wire that we fed up. The other end we're putting a ring terminal on. It's gonna to connect to the positive side of the battery. Our wire from underneath came up right here behind this hose. This hole in this panel feeds right over to the batteries. I fed it up, passed it over, and we are right here. And then this is my wire. So we'll go ahead and strip this back. Lay it on our butt connector. We'll take our fuse holder, as I mentioned. Cut it in half. We're gonna strip back both ends. Lay 
I add a ring terminal, which also does not come in the kit, onto one end. The other end, we'll add it into our buck connector. We'll make the connection to our battery, add our fuse, and then we'll test everything out. Go ahead and test out our switch. I know we're getting power to our switch. We're getting power to our switch. We're getting power to our panels. We're gonna let this go for a second. We'll feel the pads and make sure they're heating up. So you've got a little heat gun here, temperature gauge. We're gonna just point it at the tank. It's 67 degrees. I'll we'll point it at the pad. Seventy degrees. So you know our pads are working, and then you know the longer they sit, the more it's going to heat up the inside of this tank and keep everything from freezing. Once you've got everything connected, you clean up all your wires. You're ready to go. It's going to do it for look at and installation on the Saul Bristol RV camper tank heaters on a 2020 Mantis travel trailer.